Good afternoon, everyone, uh, and welcome to today's webinar, SAP on Azure, Planning Your Journey, Practical Considerations and Best Practice. Our speakers today are Ali Adil, Partner Technology Strategist from Microsoft, Ahmed Shauki, Pre-Sales Team Lead, EMEA, from SUSE, and Nitin Fatnani, Vice President, SAP Practice, MicroExcel. Over the next hour, we will cover typical SAP customer challenges, SAP on Azure roadmap, maximizing your SAP investments, typical movement and hybrid deployment scenarios, as well as SAP S for HANA movement options available to you as a customer. Uh, please uh, uh, post your questions in the chat box and we'll answer all your questions towards the end of the webinar. Uh, this webinar is being recorded for your information and uh, we will be able to share the webinar recording uh, with all participants once the webinar is uh, complete. Before we start uh, with uh, today's presentation, uh, I will just take uh, 60 seconds of your time to quickly introduce your host for today, which is us, MicroExcel. So my name is Abhay Bhatt, Vice President for the Middle East for MicroExcel. Uh, the agenda for today is uh, SAP on Azure, uh, followed by SUSE and Azure, and followed by SAP Systems in the Azure Cloud, uh, as you can see here. Let me just give you a quick introduction to MicroExcel, and we move straight on to the technical content which is, I think, what everyone's waiting for. OK, so basically we, we are a micro is, is is a global company. Uh, we our vision and mission is to basically offer top tier to aim to be a top tier consulting partner and provide you with premium consulting services to services to assist you in your digital transformation journey using the latest technologies at very competitive price points. So we were established in 2001 in the US, uh, and today we have more than 1,500 employees and with a global presence across the Americas, Asia, and the Middle East. So this will quickly show you where we are present globally. We're basically Asia, Middle East, as well as the Americas. Our services and technology portfolio includes Microsoft, SAP, custom software development and quality assurance and testing services for all kinds of software projects. So we are a Microsoft Gold partner and a Microsoft Azure managed partner, which means that you could uh, uh, you could rely on us for anything related to Microsoft Azure, uh, whether it's SAP or non-SAP. Uh, with this brief introduction, I uh, I hand over to our next speaker, Ali Adil, from micro uh, from from uh, Microsoft. Ali, over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, Abai, and um, uh, welcome everybody. Thank you for having me in this webinar. Uh, a quick introduction. My name is Ali Adil. I'm the partner technology strategist in Microsoft, um, handling the SAP on Azure. Uh, I'm also an SAP former uh, technology consultant. I used to work for SAP for quite some time, and here we're going to be just discussing the uh, SAP on Azure when it comes to the Azure regions, the customer challenges, and of course, while we're talking about the SAP, we can't forget about the uh, the roadmap that we do have inside Microsoft for those customers who are thinking of moving their SAP landscape to the cloud and their journey. And of course, after all of this, we have to mention also the whole digital transformation that the customer can have and all the services within Azure that the customer can leverage to use their SAP landscape with those uh, services. Uh, so by that, we're going to go to the next slide, please, Abai. This is when we're going to be mentioning the Azure regions. So of course, um, everybody knows, and this is also on our public uh, public website, 
uh, Azure has more the global regions and footprints uh, than any other uh, cloud provider. So you can see from where we are uh, focusing within the MIA region, uh, we do have the UAE data centers um, within the GCC. We also have uh, the Qatari data center that was just announced and also the Israeli one. And we also have the, uh, the one in South Africa. And as you can see, we have 61 regions within 140 available countries and from the uh, slide as, as you can see from the um, uh, from this map here we always have two data centers in each country so we are actually putting your sap primary node on one of those data center and then the uh, second uh, data center is actually acting as the disaster recovery so we we move your sap landscape to the primary node for the nearest data centers for our customers and we just put uh, their secondary uh, like the disaster recovery nodes on the other data center just to make the failover easier and faster for them. Um, moving to the next slide, we're going to be discussing the uh, the challenges and why the customers should be thinking of moving uh, to the cloud. The first thing first, SAP is now pushing all their customers to move from the basic ECC 6.0, of course, to the S4. And by doing this, this will need a lot of computing and memory, especially when we're talking about the uh, the HANA database or the HANA platform, which is an in-memory database. This requires a lot of resources, which is going to be very expensive for the for the customers to bring a physical hardware to their uh, on-prem or even to their uh, private clouds. So by moving to the cloud, and this is why SAP um, is getting this embrace 1.0 and also the rise with SAP, they are still preferring uh, the Microsoft Azure uh, cloud as their preferable hyperscaler for moving the customers because we do have this long relationship with uh, SAP for more than 25 years. We have the same go to market strategy as SAP and we are actually helping the customers to move their SAP landscape to the cloud, which I'm going to be showing you the roadmap of different SAP landscapes that customers can think about just to how they uh, want to move uh, their SAP landscape to the cloud. So the first challenge, of course, when the, any customer will think about bringing an on-prem uh, hardware is that they have to bring it and they get commitment from three to five years and of course this hardware should be living for these three to five years so the hardware will be actually oversized when you go to the cloud we just provide you with the virtual machines that are required for at least the first year and then you can do the scale up as we're going to be showing you in the coming slides how you can uh, do a, uh, a scale up for your virtual machines. Whenever your business is growing, we are growing with you with the virtual machines. Of course, it's also including the dev test and QA environment. So you can still have your development and quality assurance system side by side with your uh, SAP production systems. However, even though if you are not having any internal implementation or any developing that's happening on the development system and moving it through the uh, transport uh, route to the QA so you can do unit testing or integration testing, you can still have those systems side by side with the production on the cloud and you can put them on snooze. So you actually pay whenever you are using a compute and memory. So if those virtual machines are on the cloud and you're not using them, you're putting them on snooze. So you're not actually uh, paying for anything, only you're paying for those virtual machines that are up and running. So this is one of the benefits that uh, you're having once you move to the cloud. Of course, the other technologies, because now we're talking a digital transformation. So by having your SAP workloads on the cloud, you can actually leverage from all the other Azure services that uh, Microsoft Azure is offering. For example, like the Azure Active Directory, which I'm going to be showing you in the last slide, uh, to have a full services that can actually integrate with your SAP uh, landscape. And from there, of course, you can have the single sign-on, for example, if you are going to be using the Azure Active Directory. Uh, next slide, Abai, please. <coughs> Sorry. 
Talking about the uh, the roadmap um, of any customer who are actually thinking of going to the cloud, we're going to be starting with the basics. Of course, these are the four different ways of the customers who are thinking of moving to the cloud. The first one is the lift and shift. If you're still on ECC and you are thinking of going to either suite on HANA, like ECC on HANA, or a full migration to the S4 uh, uh, over HANA database, you can leverage from the Azure Cloud by moving as is, like the shift and lift, we take you with your ECC on any database, whether it's SQL, MaxDB, Sybase, whatever. Uh, and then we, you can be a one step on the cloud, as you can see from the uh, example A. And once you are on the, on the cloud, this is where you get the flexibility and scalability of the cloud. You can scale up your virtual machine, you can add more disks, you can um, uh, increase your memory, use the flexibility of the cloud to do your migration to either the HANA database or a full migration to the S4. This is a, uh, a good example and most of our customers are actually uh, using this method to just go one step to the cloud and use the scalability of it to uh, do the migration, whether to the HANA or the S4. Uh, the B and the C lift are mostly the same. For the B, uh, it's just going um, again to the cloud while doing the migration uh, to the HANA database using the heterogeneous copy. And then from there, uh, if your business requires, then uh, you can actually um, replace your uh, ECC to be the uh, the new application, for, which is the S4, or the last option, which is going to be a greenfield, a new uh, greenfield implementation. We uh, build you the uh, the virtual machines, which is all certified by SAP, which I'm going to be showing you in the next slide, and how we do the mapping. Uh, and then once you are building your S4 on the cloud on a HANA database, then we can do uh, either a backup and restore or just migrating your database uh, to the HANA ones on the cloud and then you're going to be there ready for uh, what SAP is actually looking for for all their clients just to move to the uh, HANA database before 2027. So we are helping the, the customers uh, to do this uh, migration by putting their SAP landscape on the cloud and then move with them um, one step at a time just to do the full uh, migration. And this is why we do have our partners here, Micro Excel, who will be helping you in this journey that you go with the cloud. Next slide, please. So how we are doing this on the Microsoft Azure Cloud, we actually have two scenarios. It's either the TDIs, which is the virtual machines that we do have, of course, uh, all these virtual machines are certified by SAP. So as you can see from the bottom of the slide, we are following this SAP note, which is 1928533. This is where all the prerequisites uh, that any customer should think about before moving to the Azure Cloud. Uh, the prerequisites when it comes to the operating system, if they need to do any upgrades for OS before moving, uh, the kernel updates for the SAP, of course. Um, this is all like 10 minutes upgrades for their SAP kernel before moving to the cloud. And then at the end of this SAP note, you will see all the certified virtual machines that Microsoft provides, and it's certified by SAP that it can work with either the NetWeaver or even the S4 and the HANA databases. Uh, for the TDIs, we have uh, the, the single virtual machines that can go all the way up to 12 terabytes of memory. And of course, we do have the scale out scenario. The scale out scenario can go all the way uh, to 96 uh, terabyte. And of course, Microsoft is also committed with an SLA. So we do have the 99.9 uh, percent of SLA. This is when it comes to a single virtual machine. So for example, the application of the production uh, where you're going to be having your S4, we provide you with 99.9 .9 and also for the virtual machine that's going to host the HANA database. And for the high availability, we provide you with 99.95% of an SLA for this. Um, as I mentioned, uh, all the virtual machines are certified as per the SAP node, and this is what we follow within Microsoft and with, with also when we work with our partners here like Micro Excel, we make sure that all the virtual machines that's going to be hosting your SAP workloads are actually certified by SAP. Uh, the second scenario that we do have is those customers who 
actually require more memory uh, than the 12 terabyte. So we do have something called the HLIs or the HANA large instances. These are actually physical bare metal uh, servers that are in our Azure data centers and it's only dedicated for this specific customer. So it's not a shared uh, um, physical machines. It's dedicated for those uh, customers. Again, we have uh, a single node that supports uh, up to 24 terabyte. This is for the OLTP systems and it's the same. We have the scale out scenario that can go all the way until 128 terabyte and we provide also a 99.99% of SLA for this. And for those virtual, for those HLIs that we provide for Microsoft, again, we are following the SAP standards when it comes to the certified machines. And this is the SAP note, as you can see from the slide that we follow within Microsoft to make sure that everything, whenever it comes to the SAP, is as per the SAP standards. Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, last but not least, these are all the, the Azure services that we do have uh, within our Microsoft data centers. And this is what I mentioned before that it's not only Microsoft is not looking to the SAP customers that we just want to host your SAP landscape. It's not about that. It's a full digital transformation. The all the Azure services that are available within the uh, the Microsoft data centers, the customers can actually leverage from this. For example, um, like we're talking about Rise with SAP that SAP just announced uh, a week ago uh, with the integration of Teams. Teams is within the Azure data center within the uh, O365. So you can leverage from this while having your SAP workloads on the Azure cloud, this is where it's going to be easier for you to integrate with Teams. And of course, as I mentioned, the Azure Active Directory, it's an Azure services, and you can leverage from this to have an SSO and single sign on for your whole SAP landscape, depending on your complexity. Um, the, um, the backup solution, we, we have the HANA backup and we also have the snapshots and uh, the, the file system structured backup for the, for the storages for your SAP whether it's an application or database uh, backup. So also we have this uh, Azure HANA backup uh, available for the SAP workloads and the rest of the Azure services, it needs days to talk about, but everything is there, including the, the storages, even the storages that we uh, use within the SAP are all certified by SAP using the SAP notes as well, which is certified by SAP and have done a test on SAP uh, labs. So even the premium storages, whether it's a premium or ultra storages or the uh, Azure NetApp files are all certified by SAP to be working on either NetWeaver or the HANA database. And uh, the rest is depending on the customer require. So everything we have from IoT intelligence, the data, uh, the, the compute service and also the integration and also not to mention also for not to forget to mention the SAP Cloud Platform services that we do have within our Azure data centers that can integrate uh, your SAP workloads, whether it's whenever it's hosted on the Azure data centers with the um, uh, the SAP services uh, that's uh, already hosted on SAP like Ariba or SuccessFactor or FieldGlass. So we have th those connectors that can connect your SAP on the Azure with those uh, SAP SaaS services that SAP is hosting. Uh, so by that, uh, back to you, Avoy, and um, the rest of the team. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ali. Uh, that was a very uh, informative uh, presentation. Uh, we move on to our next speaker, uh, Ahmed Shauki from Souza. Thank you, Abai. Thank you. So, hello, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you today. Uh, my name is Ahmed Shauqi. I'm the technical team lead for Sousa Mina. Um, and I'm coming with more than 11 years of uh, experience supporting my customers through different technological journeys like virtualization, cloud, and now digital transformation. 
Next slide, please. Uh, so today I will walk you through about uh, what SUSE, along with Azure, with our ecosystem like Micro Excel, can do differently together to ensure your continued success on such different times as we are living through. Uh, and I'll try to focus more on two points, one about SAP journey, and actually another one that touched point uh, along with Ali about digital transformation and how we can enable you to do a better edge and hybrid cloud IT strategy. Next slide, please. Uh, so please uh, keep it interactive as much as you can. Uh, use the Q&A box for questions that we can tackle on uh, later. So why do you think, first of all, uh, SUSE is part of that conversation? Uh, so just for who uh, doesn't know SUSE yet, uh, we are a German-based company. We are currently the largest independent open source company with a history of innovation spanning more than 20 years ago. And during that time, actually, we had leveraged our partnership with Microsoft Azure, not Azure, Microsoft only part, because that was like 20 years ago, working with SAP to ensure uh, driving our customer success across. And now, as Ali highlighted on the roadmap, we have a lot to do of onboarding the new platform, either HANA from database side or S4 as a complete uh, digital core for enterprises. And it's very exciting to be with, with Azure because with them we actually have uh, many firsts to the market, which means it's a value for our customer to go with such winning team. Uh, so we were the first one to have a, a kernel optimized uh, specifically for Azure platform that our customer gain uh, additional 25% more performance we are also the first to deploy uh, HANA and enabling that on large instances that Ali referred to. And we were the first one from commercial side to offer a software reservation discounts from Azure Marketplace. All of that representing value uh, to our mutual customer. And as, as a result of that, as you can see on the slide, that 90% of SAP workload on Azure is running on SUSE. Uh, and as you can see also from that um, roadmap discussion that we are currently dominating the whole HANA market landscape, um, but also we don't neglect the business suite on any database, which is only referred to as ECC or traditional deployment model, where a lot of customers used to have third party databases like maybe Oracle, maybe SQL, maybe other databases as well. And SAP offer those customers a time frame up to 2027 20, to take their step into the HANA model. Otherwise, support would be suspended. And the 80% that you can see on the slide about having SAP applications on Linux, this actually not so long ago was only 70%. And from my understanding and from my customer engagement that we see on the field, people use this left and shift approach to take the first step on their uh, SAP transformation, which means that they can, without changing anything, just introducing the platform layer, which SUSE represents. So if he is an SQL customer or an Oracle customer, from database point of view, the same database can be brought into SUSE Linux, and then it also gives your system admin some time to build up the skills and understand the platform that will host the critical part of your uh, business application. Uh, not to mention also a lot of Unix uh, users there who want to also have some sort of uh, lifecycle pressure to modernize their infrastructure. So that should be a good step uh, with minimal risk um, and supporting the team for such enablement. And along with Azure Engineering, SUSE Engineering has consistently developed and maintained ready template automated deployments to make the most complex workloads predictable and successful with the minimal error prone processes. The next slide, please. Uh, 
and you don't have to take our word for it. Uh, you can check SAP themselves. They are not only uh, our biggest partner, they are also our biggest customer. Uh, and we managed really to maximize their success of their internal deployment as well as some of the external deployments. It is a reference video for the time being. I will not be able to play it now, but I will give it to you on the material for you to see uh, more details about that. Um, and one of the things that we missed mentioning probably is that HANA itself was developed by SAP on top of SUSE platform. So we are kind of the reference engineering platform. And now we're also part of the endorsed apps uh, program part of SAP. So next slide, please. Uh, when it comes to maximizing your investment, downtime is a critical part for businesses to uh, cater for, especially for such business critical workload like uh, SAP. And as you can see that the platform from Azure can give you from three to four nines, which in some cases are not uh, enough for some customers. As an example, I'll share Acme, and it's, it's an interesting story. I understand uh, that at scale wise, it may not be applicable, but for your information, Acme is an insurance company that's serving like more than 10 million customers across Europe, Canada and Australia. And when they selected or opted for the cloud, one of the key KPIs for their movement and evaluation was the uptime. So what we have done along with Azure team that we delivered a proof of value for this customer with a running POC on top of Azure, and we managed to get them up to six nines availability. Definitely that was a scale out cluster. So it's actually another call out for the people who listen or see that uh, webinar. We are happily uh, can engage with the ecosystem to deliver some discovery and enablement workshop and identify your KPIs that you're looking to move forward. Next slide, please. And it's not always uh, applicable for such big customer like Acme and the people who want a scale out cluster, that's not everyone, but the majority of our customers who are running SAP are enjoying up to five lines availability. And it's not only a choice of the operating system part, but it's actually a collection of technologies, experiences, and tool sets how we do it for our customers to make it more predictable and reach up to your expectation. These are just few names here. Please feel free to have a discussion uh, later on or questions about any of them. Uh, just quickly, if you are an existing Azure customer, then you'll have live patching for free if you selected your instance from Marketplace. So uh, we have documentation that can help you to boost your uptime with this live patching, which is certified by SAP to run on HANA and other apps. Next slide, please. Uh, so in this section, I'll just like highlight some of the uh, common questions and checkpoints that people want to get through their transformation journey. Uh, I believe that slide has been covered in a different way from Ali, so I will skip that for the next slide, please. Important checkpoints. So we let's pick the first one. Uh, so as SUSE is having the most adaptable Linux distribution, it actually enables us to customize a special version for SAP workloads. And it's quite obvious that we have two uh, distributions available there. So if you are planning for an SAP HANA or a high availability setups or a longer life cycles with less upgrades, maybe you need to consider that option and choose the right release, which is the SUSE for SAP applications. And it's a single instance that can support your apps, either ECC, HANA, or S4. All of that is supported 
part of that version. The other version can be for there for a generic workload. Next slide, please. Uh, that's actually my favorite one because it's kind of, I saw it missing in some deployments in the region. Uh, and it's a very good communication and control tool between your basis team as well as your sysadmins team. So in that, what we call cluster collector, if your basis team has initiated a shutdown or reboot of any uh, high availability resource in the cluster from the SAP side, if the cluster is not aware of that change, he might try to restart that instance again to reserve the high availability uh, state. But with this tool, it's actually kind of, it lets the Linux cluster from our side to make sure that this is a user driven event and you should not interfere and restart this unless the user brought it uh, online again. So it's there for users to use, but we don't see it uh, widely adopted, maybe because of, of the knowledge part. Next slide, please. Um, we, we typically had this also question like, should we choose from Azure Marketplace? There is an also option that to bring your own subscription. And I believe there is no wrong or right answer. It depends. Uh, so let's say large instances, you need to get bring your own instance uh, from SUSE directly. Just a few points that you need to consider is the support route. Uh, like either it's totally from Microsoft and you choose from Marketplace or Pay as you go, or SUSE support, as well as the update infrastructure is another point to consider, uh, like from where you will get your updates. Uh, next slide, please. And definitely you need to pick up the right platform for the right workload. Uh, as you can see, all of these are kind of SAP benchmark links, it's all public, and it tells you which version to choose based on the benchmark. So you can find details there about the instance that you would like to select with respect to the workload. Next slide. So we also understand that for some of our customer, Linux is new. For them, maybe they are pure uh, Windows house or probably pure uh, Unix house as well. Or even they could be having some Linux workload, but not our green Linux, SUSE Linux. And with that, we anticipated the challenge of appropriately managing this complex landscape. And we are introducing one solution to be your kind of single pane of management for full lifecycle management for all Linux instances. And this tool is already hybrid in nature, so you can manage your workloads on the cloud, on-prem. The tool itself can be, SUSE Manager, I mean, can be on cloud or on-prem, and it will allow you to manage any Linux workload. Since coming from SUSE, we are really the open, open source company. So we make it open and supporting RHEL, Red Hat instances, Ubuntu instances, CentOS, Oracle instances, and the list is open. We are keeping the list growing. And it's not only a patch management or configuration management, it also has a lot of automation capabilities based on salt stack, which really can relieve your team from doing lots of manual work. We have some testimonies from some customer that the admin time saving out of this tool was up to 24 days a year. Next slide, please. So that was the part of SAP. Uh, I would expect that some people would have further questions. I'm, I'm happy to assist with that. But what comes next is what's beyond the SAP. And what you can see currently on the screen, what we call SUSE cake, uh, which represent our flagship uh, Linux legacy, uh, which is definitely representing the most adaptable Linux distribution. And the way we engineered our distribution really allow us to make it adaptable for some workloads like SAP as an example, as we have seen. Similarly, we have a distribution for high performance computing, and that's also available on top of Azure. 
for point of sale, we understand that also point of sale and edge deployment require some business uh, and functional KPIs that we can fulfill from our side. And the upper part, which represent Sousa Rancher, and we have completed our uh, acquisition to Rancher and Rancher more uh, basically about the modernization, the digital transformation. So while we understand that different customers are at different stages with their digital transformation, Rancher is currently the most widely adopted Kubernetes management platform. So we have the reported active deployments are more than 30,000, 37,000 active deployments currently, and the number is increasing. And because of the ease of use, we can really empower your hybrid cloud, or even if you have workloads on top of uh, Azure Kubernetes service, we can definitely add value to this. So if it is about DevOps application modernization, digital transformation, containerization, please, we'll be more than happy to discuss this uh, very hot topic in the industry. And along with Azure, we are also having focus on edge. A lot of edge is, is going as a play in the market, and we are ready to take that forward uh, with the help of, of Azure team. That was my last slide, uh, and my next slide will just be having my uh, contact details for any of these points. We are more than happy to engage with you, do some learning workshops, discovery workshops, and to take that forward. Thank you. Back to you, Abai and the team. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, we can see some. Uh, we can see some questions uh, in the in the chat. Um, I think we will address this uh, after uh, you know uh, the next presenter uh, finishes his presentation. If that's okay. Sure. Yes. Great. So um, we move on now to uh, our next presenter. That's uh, Nitin Fatnani from MicroXL. Nitin, over to you. Okay. Thank you, Bhai. Thank you, uh, Ali and Ahmad, for your prior uh, slides and discussions. Very engaging. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining this webinar with all of us. Uh, you know, it's 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 quite an interesting. Uh, subject that we are talking about today, which you know most SAP customers, uh, you know, are probably you know in the midst of thinking as a future roadmap as well as current activity, or may have already started their journeys on. So, um, you know, our objective here, you know, as being in Micro Excel as an SAP partner, uh, you know, as well as a, a Microsoft Azure partner, you know, we've teamed up with Suze and Micro Excel and Microsoft uh, to you know kind of give all of you you know the real uh, you know perspective on you know what are the cases uh, what are those scenarios what are those considerations what are the options uh, you know versus some of the choices and the roadmap decisions and strategies uh, you know that you could look at so uh, you know Abhay, if you could move to the next slide you know i i would like to you know talk about some of the perspectives of you know uh, the real cases to go into the cloud today now you know some of the influencing factors uh, today with most of you uh, you know are as below when i say aging hardware so you know one of the key reasons is that your hardware is due for a refresh and you are at you know soon you know in the near future or a distant future and you are looking at you know either an investment into a new generation of hardware uh, and alongside uh, you know maybe an upgraded uh, operating system and an upgraded database to support that hardware uh, requirement so uh, this is an opportunity you know where uh, you know the decision box comes up where you know you can really think whether you should be making that investment into those appliances and in you know in, you know uh, in house data center versus uh, you know look at the cloud option now, clearly, uh, you know, the, the, the cloud is a winner here, uh, given that, uh, you know, there are quite a few benefits which, you know, which we can mention, uh, you know, uh, as we speak further. 
you know, now since I mentioned investment, uh, uh, you know, for into the appliances, again, it's it's you know it's an organization's decision, you know, on capex versus opex. Now, you know, investing in appliances comes under the capex bucket, uh, whereas you know, if you go for the cloud, it you know classifies into the opex. It's a service uh, platform as a service. Uh, you know, or infrastructure as a service uh, where it's, you know, as a pay as you go or a monthly pay and shows up on your uh, P&L or balance sheet in a different format. Now, you know, not just from an investment per se, there are a lot of hidden areas, uh, you know, where the investments kind of uh, get neutralized when you go to the cloud. For example, the space for a data center, the electricity, uh, you know, uh, for the data center. Uh, you have to maintain the cooling in your data center. You need uh, people to man your data center. You need managers to man the people who are managing the data center. You know, that's an invisible one again. And there are many such factors when you have your own data center and not the cloud. So, you know, these invisible costs or invisible activities uh, you know, kind of uh, get neutralized when you're going into the cloud, giving a better return of investment. Um, so, you know, with, with an SAP environment, uh, you're focused on managing or administering your SAP application only and not the rest of the environment around it. So security and compliance requirements sometimes, uh, you know, require you to be on a single platform uh, you know, they may require you to be, uh, you know, on single sign on. They may require you to be on multi factor authentication. Uh, Azure clearly has, you know, uh, the benefits here. Uh, there is Active Directory available in Azure. There is Microsoft multi factor authentication available. Uh, Ali has already touched on these points. I'm not going to, you know, deep dive into that. Uh, digital interoperability, we already spoke about this. The colleagues have spoken. Uh, resources, uh, human and hardware. Again, this was a point that I touched earlier. And then lastly is around, you know, licensing. Now, you know, uh, it's it's likely that your, uh, you know, operating system or database is also, you know, going out of maintenance. It's an opportunity for, again for you to go to the cloud. Um, you know, when you are talking about SUSE and, you know, you are looking at uh, going for another database, uh, it is a clear path there that, you know, should you be going on the same database that you were on? Should you go to HANA as a database or should you consider, you know, your move to S4 HANA? We'll talk about those options, uh, you know, in the subsequent uh, discussions on the slides. But again, you know, I'm just quickly running through the benefits. Of course, reduce total cost of ownership, of course, provisioning and on demand. Uh, you can ramp up, ramp down, scale up, scale down, uh, scale out on demand, uh, start smaller, uh, grow bigger, you know, as you grow, uh, you know, complete lift and shift option available. There are quick move options available today. Uh, it's no longer complex like it used to be in the past. Uh, you know, Micro Excel as a partner, you know, has worked with many customers and we have achieved, uh, a, you know, uh, a significant uh, reduction in the overall timeline to, you know, complete the lift and shift activities. Um, you know, reduction of on-prem or removal of on-prem infrastructure requirements. Basically, you are managing only your application and not the, uh, you know, associated infrastructure around it. Uh, it is agnostic to hardware maintenance. It's scalable. Uh, DR and HA enable. So, uh, you know, Ali has already, you know, touched upon uh, the DR and HA capabilities uh, about the primary and the secondary nodes. Uh, we'll talk about it a little more uh, in the subsequent slides. Uh, you know, upgrades, uh, you know, those are some of the benefits that, you know, once you're doing an upgrade in, in a single step, uh, you could also move to the cloud. Uh, you know, easy movement options when you're considering uh, the uh, suite on HANA or S4 HANA options. So Abhay, with that, can we move to the next slide? OK, so you know, typical usage scenarios. I know different slides have been presented, um, you know, by our friends earlier. Um, so I'm just, you know, covering, you know, some of the, you know, SAP specific scenarios, um, you know, where we're talking about having your entire landscape 
uh, you know, on Azure. Now it could be you could be an SAP ECC only, or you could have the SAP, you know, other applications from the SAP business suite. So that would include your BW, CRM, APO, etc. Uh, kind of moving the whole thing as a lift and shift into, you know, the cloud. Um, secondly, uh, you know, you want to you probably never had a disaster recovery environment, and now you are thinking that you want to go to the disaster recovery environment, but uh, you still want to leverage benefits from your existing on premise appliances because the end of life cycle has still not reached. So, you know, it's it's a great opportunity to, you know, have the disaster recovery uh, in the Azure cloud. Uh, it's 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 proven. Uh, Micro Excel has done several implementations where the entire productive environment is on premise versus the just the disaster recovery or the high availability HA being in the you know Azure cloud. Archiving, uh, it's likely that you may want to create you know have your archive database. You could have the archive database on the Azure cloud. Keep it in the uh, you know cold mode. Uh, and bring it up when required. So the data syncing can happen, uh, you know, at the frequency you have decided or the archival frequency that you have chosen. But uh, when you want to access the database, it's only then when you pay for your compute time, bring up your system uh, instead of, you know, having a dedicated appliance or, and an OS and a database just to manage your archive. Now, uh, from a production only. So again, there is an option that you know you could have your dev and QA environments uh, in your existing on premise and the production and the you know DR and HA if at all you have or just the production into the uh, cloud uh, and the reverse case as well. You know you may have your production in on premise and you could have your you know dev test uh, kind of environments in the Azure cloud. Now, one of the scenarios that you know I haven't listed here, most of you, when you would, you know, uh, most brownfield customers or the ones that are doing their upgrades or conversions to, you know, S4 from ECC to S4 or Sweeton HANA from S uh, to S4, um, you know, one of the parts uh, that most, uh, you know, implementers or software integrators would suggest is to use a dual landscape approach. Now, let's face it. Uh, you you know have procured your uh, infrastructure way back in the past and you know it is already you know hitting its uh, upper barriers and you want the additional landscapes just to complete your project azure cloud is the best option here because you are you know bringing up those parallel environments to complete your projects and then you could move completely into the cloud or go back to your on-premise. So project related uh, parallel environment requirements are also, you know, uh, one of the, you know, use cases that we as a software integrator have leveraged, you know, on the Azure cloud environment. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, again, uh, this is kind of, uh, you know, resonating to what I already spoke, uh, you know, critical systems versus non-critical systems. Some of the decision that you make, uh, you know, you have you can have your DR in the cloud where your DR is on warm standby. That means the replication is happening constantly from your production primary to your DR side, but uh, the compute resources are not getting utilized till the time you are, uh, you know, invoking your DR. So let's say if there is a failover on your primary side, it is only then when you will, you know, fail over uh, into your DR environment, give access to your users and they will start using it. And that's when, you know, you would actually pay for your compute services. So that's a warm standby uh, option. And then once, you know, the, uh, you know, the issue on the primary is resolved, you may want to switch back to the primary. Uh, or continue on DR uh, based on the strategy that we design uh, for you, uh, you know, and then uh, the DR goes back into just the standby and the computing, uh, you know, usage stops. Um, you know, I, I already touched upon the, you know, low cost of ownership when it came to, you know, the test systems, uh, you know, bringing up the uh, on-demand test systems as well as bringing in that scalability and high availability. Now, uh, you know, Ahmed already has touched upon, uh, you know, some of the uh, inbuilt features that Suze uh, offers for, you know, the DR as well as high availability. The native capabilities are available within Suze as well as Azure 
to manage the you know failover and failbacks etc so uh, you know uh, unlike what used to be in an on premise uh, you know your thought process in the past uh, it's rather simple uh, in today's world uh, in the azure cloud can we move to the next one please now again um, you know this is more specific to customers you know who are planning their s4 hana journeys uh, there are several you know starting points uh, you know in terms of where you would be today uh, you know in terms of uh, you know the database as well as your application version so you know there are different parts which we are talking about here when we have greenfield versus upgrade versus system conversion so for example you are on you know any database in you know on premise uh, i say you know we are talking about a single step uh, that could you know help con you convert uh, you know from your sap uh, you know ecc environment and then bring you onto s4 along with the uh, cloud migration so uh, as you see that the you know uh, a, a, the customers who are at an application level of less than ecc 6.0 obviously require the upgrade part the orange lines are the upgrade part you got to come to ecc 6.0 and then you know plan your uh, conversion uh, easy option for customers who are on less than 6.0 is to you know consider a greenfield a you hardly have leveraged the functional innovations that came in with the uh, SAP and the SAP versions. Uh, so, you know, it's it's important uh, that, you know, you're uh, looking at uh, reviewing uh, the processes that you have implemented and the functionalities that you implemented uh, and compare it with what S4 HANA is offering natively. Uh, you know, as, as we all know, you know, SAP has come a long way. It has evolved since, you know, the first version came out from 15.11. Today we are on S the S4 HANA version 2020, and there is a lot of process optimization in which SAP has invested. So there is a, uh, you know, great opportunity again uh, for customers to review and re-engineer some of the processes, you know, that were uh, kind of uh, implemented long back in the past. Um, uh, now, from a system conversion per se, uh, you know, we have uh, ECC 6.0. You could go to, you know, S4 HANA directly using the system conversion part. If you are on SAP Suite on HANA, that means the database, uh, HANA database version is 1.0. Again, you got to upgrade to the HANA database version 2.0, and then there is a simple system conversion path available for you to uh, quickly move to uh, S4 HANA uh, with very less complexity. Um, and lastly, if you're already on HANA DB 2.0, uh, you know, it is rather easy for you to move. Um, if you are on a non SAP ERP alongside your uh, ECC or SAP environment, again, uh, it's possible to move together. Uh, there are options available to do so. Uh, can we go to the next slide? OK, so, you know, these are some of the, you know, questions, uh, influencing questions uh, that will help decide, you know, some of, uh, you know, your decision whether you should do a greenfield implementation versus system conversion. Uh, we did speak about this, but in the best interest of time, I am, you know, uh, you know, you know, leaving this as a, you know, leave away or uh, a reading material uh, for all of you to, you know, visit by yourself. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is a typical timeline. Uh, it's a typical illustrative project schedule that we, you know, set it up uh, right from the Azure sizing exercise, the discovery work, uh, to the Azure infrastructure setup. Uh, as well as the Azure DR setup and Azure optimization. Now, the, the path is also an SAP ECC to S4 HANA conversion path. So, uh, what you could see here uh, is an average timeline of close to 16 weeks. Uh, most ECC to S4 HANA conversions range anywhere between 10 to 25 weeks, depending on the complexity. There are different, uh, you know, uh, scenarios which are, you know, some of the uh, considerations uh, you know, including data volume, the network bandwidth options, what's your, you know, downtime tolerance for the final cutover, 
what kind of in-house resources you have available for testing? What's the level of maturity of the testers uh, from a functional standpoint? Are you also looking at, at activating additional functionality post conversion? Uh, you know, uh, and then uh, you know what what is the kind of Azure infrastructure you're signing up for? Are there any DR and HA requirements? Uh, do you have an active maintenance contract with SAP or a PCOE partner? That's important. Um, you know, uh, what is the revision level uh, of your current SAP landscape now? Uh, right from an application to the you know operating system as well as your database, it's important to know because even to start your move uh, to S4, there is a you know minimum level that you may want to be at. So if you're not at your minimal minimum level, there may be some uh, prerequisite steps that you may require to bring yourself to that level before you can actually start moving to S4 and or cloud. Um, Unicode environments, that's again one of the you know considerations. If you're not on Unicode, that needs to be taken care. What's the custom code footprint within your SAP you know, landscape? So you know that actually helps decide what is the effort required or the timeline required. What is the third party interfaces footprint? Again, you know, that is one of the uh, important criteria. You have to figure out what is your interface strategy you are going to remediate and other functional factors such as CVI conversion, etc. So we are all aware, you know, if you require more details, Micro Excel will be happy to talk uh, more details uh, around uh, you know how to plan uh, and look at the roadmap uh, for your organization uh, to bring you over to S4 or probably a lift and shift uh, you know onto Azure and then eventually as a longer term roadmap into S4 now um, you know with that uh, you know since we are reaching the barrier uh, I am happy to uh, you know you know connect uh, with some of you in person as required uh, you know, with the team here uh, and, you know, offer further discussions around assessment uh, and our approach uh, and the, you know, uh, service offerings that we've got. So, uh, Abhay, uh, back to you. Thank you, Nitin. Uh, so, uh, 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 so we, I think let's get more. We have uh, just about two minutes left for the Q&A. So uh, we will try to answer the questions uh, right away. Okay, so let me just uh, read out some of the questions. Uh, okay, so basically uh, the, uh, there are three questions as I can see. Okay, uh, one is the first question is uh, for you, Ahmed. Uh, what high availability solution is being used in Azure for SAP and HANA? Is it the native slash HA, HA extension or does the customer have the choice to select any other solution as well? Uh, thanks, Abai. I put some comments there, but uh, my understanding uh, that yeah. uh, this kind of high availability setup for okay. something like SAP is a combination like leveraging Azure uh, high availability platform, leveraging okay. SAP all right. replication and all of that. So we, please approach me for further details. Sure, sure. Okay, uh, the second question also Ali has answered. How does Azure costing compare to uh, AWS costing and there is a link there which we will share with you uh, where the pricing details for Azure can be found. Okay, uh, Ahmad, you have also shared the link in the QA and it's all published. Uh, question here is, uh, you know, bandwidth is a critical point and a cost too. So to have on-premise and cloud DR, what is the technology that takes care of ensuring that minimal bandwidth is used? Okay, so I can take that. Yeah, question. I think that's for you, Nitin. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so I guess you know that is one of the most important factors when you are bridging. Uh, Nitin, you on premise environment is in the cloud. Now it, it depends on your recovery point and recovery time objective, uh, you know, uh, and the criticality of your systems. Now, because the replication frequency 
needs to be set accordingly so that before the next replication cycle happens, the previous replication is completed and there is no clash. So, you know, uh, it, it, if you if your business systems are that critical and the uh, recovery point of is let's say 10 minutes that you are not OK with losing data more than 10 minutes, then obviously your network or the connectivity needs to be that strong. Um, you know, so this is just an example that I'm talking here, but yes, it is. It is an important factor when that happens. OK, uh, I think we are uh, past our time now. Uh, the other questions uh, which are there on the Q&A. Yeah, that's it. All right, so I think uh, uh, we're done with all the questions. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we are just a minute over the appointed time. Uh, thank you very much, uh, everyone, for attending this webinar. And please feel free to, uh, you can see uh, my email ID on the screen. Please feel free to connect with me for any further questions or any further information that you may need. We will be happy to uh, uh, arrange a complimentary assessment session for you if you're planning your journey to Azure, either for SAP HANA or for any other requirement. Thank you very much again. Thank you very much, Abai. Thank you for having me here. Thank you, Abai. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to all the attendees. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Cheers.